Have you ever found something in your attic and wondered, could this be worth something? Well, this is exactly what happens in the Pawn Stars show, where lucky people turn insane items to jackpots. From rare collectibles to hidden gems, the folks at Pawn Stars have witnessed some mind-blowing transactions throughout the years. But how crazy could it get? Let's get it on. Number 10. Book of Mormon one of the most expensive things that ever came into the Pawn Star shop was a book, which might surprise you, but it wasn't just any book. The Book of Mormon was a very important part of American history. No, this has nothing to do with a show with the same name that was a big hit. The lessons of prophets who lived in America as early as 600 BC are said to be in this religious text of the Latter-day Saints. Anyone who knows anything about books will tell you that the first editions are always the most expensive. A first copy of the book sold at auction for a crazy $180,000 in 2007. But Rebecca Romney, an expert on books, said that this much later fifth version was one of the the most valuable books she had ever had to value. It seems to have been one of the last ones made before the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints leader Joseph Smith was killed. The price of the book was a whopping $40,000. After some talking, the copy owner was paid $24,000 for it. Not a bad day at the office. Number 9. Earrings with Diamonds how can you tell if a man who walks into a pawn shop is serious? Let's say he must be wearing a suit because this man in a suit showed up with a nice pair of diamond earrings. He was trying to sell and knew what he was talking about like a real pro. He could answer any question that was asked of him with ease. He even gave Rick the paperwork for the jewels and the pawn shop confirmed that they were real diamonds. Rick was happy to buy them for a jaw-dropping $40,000, which was a lot of money for him. That's a lot of money for some earrings. But if Rick had been able to sell them, there's no question question, they could have made money. They were genuine diamonds, but when the police arrived a few days later, it was discovered that there was a major problem. They had been stolen. The thief was caught, and the earrings were given back to the rightful owner because the cops tracked down the stolen jewelry. The Pawn Stars weren't quite as happy. After all, they just lost the $40,000 they paid for the stolen jewels. Number 8. Hertz Penske GT Mustang it's not just old things that have value. One customer came to the pawn shop with a rare Hertz Penske GT Mustang, a new thing they wanted to sell. This was one of the first 10 cars ever made, and the six-speed manual had never been rented, so it was in perfect shape. That's pretty much what rare means. After driving it with NASCAR driver Joey Logano, he thought it was worth a whopping $75,000. Rick was able to talk the person selling it down to 60. Number 7. Vic Flick Stratocaster Rick might not have made this buy if he hadn't had his experts on hand. He wasn't that pleased when an old man with an old Fender Stratocaster walked into his shop one day. The man said his name was Vic Flick, but Rick didn't even give him a second look. Luckily, the guitar expert was there to get everyone pumped up. The expert knew who Vic Flick was, even though Rick didn't think the name was that famous. Flick was one of the most well-known studio players who ever lived. He is best known for playing on the James Bond theme song when it was first recorded. The expert told Rick how much the beautiful 1961 Fender Strat Flick was worth. That's between sixty dollars and $70,000. With a little bargain from both sides, Flick got a huge amount of money for his guitar, $55,000, and he was happy as he left the store. He told the clerk that he was going to take his wife out for a drink to celebrate. Number 6. Ford Roadster Rick is good at putting people who own cars down. This 1932 Model B Ford Roadster was a perfect example of this. Edsel Ford, who was Henry Ford's son, was the one who made the car, and it was pretty amazing. It had 500 horsepower, a convertible top, and windows that could be rolled up, and it was still in great shape. The owner was very proud of it, so he set a price that reflected that. He asked a price of $150,000 for it. I can see why he thought that, but his hopes were quickly dashed when the car experts showed up. Even though he loved the car too, he thought it was worth about $75,000, much less than the owner had hoped for. In the end, Rick talked him down to $68,250. You can be sure that deal broke the owner's heart, but he still chose to take it. Number 5. A Gibson Guitar A regular Gibson SJ200 from 1941 will sell for a pretty high price by itself. But if the owner has a bill of sale signed by a real rock star, the guitar's price will always go through the roof. The guitar wasn't just any old piece of junk either. The beautiful piece had been well cared for and was in almost perfect shape. Rick brought in a professional, of course, to ensure this old instrument was real. Even without Still's name on it, the guitar's price was crazy. It was worth between $75 and a possible $90,000. 
Even though that sounds like a big win for the owner, the expert said that the guitar's pass made it worth at least $20,000 more. The owner was happy to sell it for $85,000. Number 4. A Dollar If someone gave you a dollar, you wouldn't pay for more than a dollar, right? Nope, that little coin in your pocket could be worth thousands of dollars if you have the right dollar. It's interesting how the owner got his hands on it. He had won it in a game of poker. Usually, winning one dollar would be a big letdown, but it was a good thing this time. This coin from 1922 is very valuable to people who collect coins. It is thought that the one brought into the shop is one of only 12 in the world. Not only is it valuable, but hard to find. It's also popular because of the sharp outline design that makes it stand out. That means the coin has much deeper lines and more raised areas than most coins. This means the shape is more beautiful, making it very hard to make. The deep patterns would wear out the machines that made the coins, which made them very hard to find, especially since most of them were quickly melted down and made into regular coins. The person who bought this rare coin knew he had something special but didn't know how much it was worth. He was way off. Rick's coin expert told him that the coin could easily be sold for a huge amount of money, like $100,000. That lucky poker winner was thrilled to get an amazing $80,000 as his prize. Number 3. Roadster by Lincoln It's hard to get the Pawn Stars to buy cars, but when you give them a beautiful classic like this one, how can they say no? The Lincoln Roadster was made as a way to get people back from Cadillac, which was their biggest competitor at the time. When they were first built at the beginning of the 20th century, they cost a lot of money, $4,000, which is about $70,000 today. But the Pawn Stars agreed that the one they saw it was worth a lot more. This one was a beautiful mint green and cream colored model from 1932 that had been kept in great shape over the years. It also had a very big V12 engine with 150 horsepower. You can't just let go of a classic expensive car like this one, so they offered the owner $95,000 in cash. He took it but returned it immediately before leaving the store. It turned out that the owner didn't want the cash or the nice car. He wanted gold bars. And well, the guys on Pawn Stars were glad to sell him what he really wanted. Number 2. A Pile of Silver the one sure way to store a lot of cash is to collect a lot of valuable metals slowly. One buyer on Pawn Stars did just that. Before he came to sell it, he had been collecting and storing crazy amounts of silver in a storage unit for about 10 years. Of course, nothing was set in stone. Some of the silver was in the form of coins, but most of it was in the form of bars. You can easily make a fake one by filling the middle of the bar with a cheaper metal. So the experts did some tests by drilling into the middle of the bars. Then they used nitric acid to test the middle of the bars. If the acid made the metal white, then it was really pure silver. And sure enough, that's what ended up happening. The Pawn Stars paid the market price for the 3,300 ounces of silver. This made the owner $110,000 richer. Some of the silver was melted down to make custom coins, which would help them make money off of the big buy. Number 1. Sketched by Maurice Sendak this is a big jump from the $110,000 buy, so it might surprise you to hear that this huge purchase was just a bunch of old sketches. If the Pawn Stars paid this much for them, they must have been pretty special, but these were not the kind of artworks you'd expect. There was no Picasso to be seen. Instead, these were drawings from a book for kids. They must have talked to Rick directly. He even said this was the best book ever written. So what happened? These sketches were used to make Maurice Sendak's famous book, Where the Wild Things Are. One of the main reasons these sketches were so important was that Sendak never sold any prints of them. That meant that each of these little pieces of paper was unique. Rick asked an art expert how much the paintings were worth, and the expert told him that they could easily be sold for a huge $310,000. Rick talked the lucky owner into selling them all for only $250,000, which is a crazy amount of money. It was a steal. So now, what would you do if you stumbled upon a treasure worth a fortune? Would you hold on to it for its sentimental value or sell it to the highest bidder? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more of our luxurious content. And why not click on another video showing now? This is The Luxurious. Talk to you in the next video.